The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a few minutes, the Equitable Society, sponsor of this program, will have an important announcement for homeowners and for all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. If this is your husband's night to go bowling or attend lodge meeting, please listen carefully to this announcement yourself so that you can tell him all about America's finest plan for home ownership, a plan that can save you money and give you greater security in a home of your own. Tonight's FBI file, The Friendly Killer. The most alarming feature of the current crime wave in America is not just the fact that it is the largest in the history of the nation. Rather, it is the probability that the majority of those who have helped to make it the largest, the thousands of juvenile and adult beginners in crime, it is the probability that the majority of them will join and thereby expand the ranks of the professional criminals. That is the most alarming part of it. For it is the professional criminals, like those in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, who live solely by preying on the lives and property of others. It is they who form the cancerous area on the moral body of our society. And any permanent increase in their number only spreads the malignancy and shortens the distance to fatal degeneration. Most any other couple would have celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary by at least dining out or having in a few friends. But William and Betty Gates preferred to spend the day and evening quietly together in their modest little home in Cleveland. It's after supper now, and they've just settled down on the living room couch. William slips an arm about his wife and draws her closer to him. Bet, honey, it's been a mighty nice day, hasn't it? Sure has. But not any nicer than all the other days we've spent together. Ah, uh, now that was a real sweet way for you to put it, honey. Well, it's it's just how I feel about it. You know, Bet, we got a lot to be thankful for. Indeed, we have. Comfortable home, our feeling for each other, and the work Walter's been giving me keeps us going along good. Uh, I I guess we ought to. No. Oh, now, who do you suppose that is? Well, I sure hope it's not company, but I better go see. Maybe it's just the paper boy to collect. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, yes? How does it feel to be married 25 years? Walter! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Ah, oh, Bill, you old cousin. Do you and Betty think Patsy and I have forgotten what day this is? Oh, now, say, now, we're mighty glad you dropped off. Well, thanks. Come on in. Come in. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Bet we got company. Good company. It's Walter and the missus. Well, well, hello there. Congratulations, Mrs. Gates. <laughs> Thank you, You're honey. You're congratulating the wrong one, Patsy. What do you mean? It's Bill you want to congratulate for Betty letting him stick around for 25 years. Oh, oh see here. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, here's a little package for you both. Oh, Mr. Carter. Oh, that's should... nothing, Mrs. Gates. Walt has got a real surprise for you. You mean there's something more? Just wait till you hear it. Bill, how would you and Betty like to have a day at Niagara Falls? What? Niagara Falls? That's right. Never been there, have you, Betty? No. Well, that's the surprise that we've got for you. Oh. We've got a compartment for you both on the train to Buffalo tonight, and it's just a little short run from there to the falls, and you can come back the next day. But... Would we have to go tonight, Walter? Yeah, you would. 
Why? Because there'll be a man getting on in the compartment next to yours headed for New York with a satchel full of bonds worth $50,000. And you want us to steal them? That's right. Well, for heaven's sake, Walter, why didn't you say that in the first place? Yes. Just think, Bet, at last we're going to see Niagara Falls. Excuse me, friend, you, you haven't gone to bed yet, have you? Who is it? Uh, this is your neighbor in the compartment next door. Oh. Hello there, what's on your mind? <laughs> well, now, there's something I forgot to tell you when we were talking back in the club car. What's that? Today happens to be our 25th wedding anniversary. Well, congratulations. <laughs> what do you know? So my wife talked me into inviting you in for a little nightcap drink or two. Oh, I see. How about it? I'd be delighted. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Betty? Yeah? Uh, Mr. Burnett's coming in for a drink. Oh, how nice. I'll just close my door. Sure. Now, go ahead in, Mr. Burnett. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I, um, I hope you have a taste for wine, Mr. Burnett. Sure. <laughs> this is real good. I, I made it myself. Here you are. Thank you. William? Thank you, Bet. May I propose a toast? Of course. Here's to the love... <clears throat> William, that was very rude of you. You hit him before he finished the toast. Next morning, in answer to a telegram from the conductor... Special Agent Hugh Miller of the New York office of the FBI met the incoming Cleveland train at Grand Central Station and went immediately to compartment A in car 426. A few minutes later... And when the porter wakened me, Mr. Miller, I was still in their compartment here. Of course, they were gone. And the bonds were gone from your compartment? Yes, sir. You say the couple got off at Buffalo? The conductor said they had booked the compartment only that far. Well, I see they were careful enough to do a little cleaning up before they left the train. How do you mean? The wood and metal surfaces in here seem to have been gone over with a wet cloth recently. They weren't leaving any fingerprints behind. Oh, but surely there must be some kind of clue that would help. Can you give me a good description of the couple? Yes, yes, of course I can. The bonds, what kind were they? Uh, Valley Gas and Electric Company in units of $1,000. Registered? No, sir, just coupon. And they'd certainly have no trouble disposing of them. I'm afraid not. Do you have a list of the serial numbers? Yes, in my office in Cleveland. Uh-oh, that'll cost us a little time. They may sell the bonds before we can alert all banks and brokers of the list of the bond numbers. Oh, I can have my office on the phone in a few minutes, Mr. Miller. All right, and have your secretary phone the list to our office there. I'll call the agent in charge there now and give him the story. Good. Then I think you and I had better hop the next plane for Cleveland. Why? Well, a couple boarded the train with you, didn't they? Yes, in all probability, Cleveland is their base, too. They'll likely head back there from Buffalo. I see. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's make those calls. Right. Well, I imagine that's Walter come for the bonds, Bet. No, I'll let him in. Just a minute. Hello, Betty. Oh, come in, Mr. Carter. Thanks. Uh, where's Bill? Right here, Walter. Oh, good, good. Did you get the bond? Yep. Well, where are they? Right here. Here you are. Uh, what'd you do with the guy? Oh, he was the nicest man, Mr. Carter. We invited him in to have a drink in honor of our anniversary. Yes, he was. He's a very sociable hey. fellow. He... Holy cats, Bill. What's the matter? He's bonds. Well, what about him? I thought the guy was carrying Cleveland municipals. These are Valley Gas and Electric. Well, there's $51,000 bonds there anyway. Well, you know what the market is on them now? No. Well, they're not listed on the board, but I know. Bonds are my racket. These are only worth about $300 a piece. Huh? Ah, too bad, Bill. That cuts yours and Betty's third down to five grand instead of 15. Oh. 
Well, anyway, that's 5,000 more than you would have had, isn't it? And besides, you had a nice trip to Niagara? Uh, yes. Well, I won't keep you waiting for your cut. Yeah. There's your five Gs. Uh, thanks, thanks ever so much, Walter. I uh, better get going and get rid of these before they get too hot. So long. Bye, Mr. Uh, so Carter. long, so long, Walter. William. Uh, what, honey? Do you think Mr. Carter was telling the truth? I don't know, Bet. But I'm sure we're going to find out. Say, what's the matter with you fellas here in the Cleveland office, Kidder? 24 hours and the bond thief's still at large. Okay, okay, Miller. The next plane from New York leaves in 30 minutes. Uh, no leads yet, huh? Well, it takes time to alert all banks and brokers in the country. Sure, but they should all be on notice by now. The bonds may have been disposed of before they were alerted. Even so, whoever bought them ought to be yelling. Do you still think the thieves' base here in Cleveland? Sure. Why? Well, we've got no record of anybody answering their description. And neither have the police. Yeah, but just the same. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Kidder speaking. Uh, this is C.P. Adams in the State Building. Yes? I am a broker. Oh, just a minute, sir. Get on the other phone, Miller. This may be a lead. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Adams? I have no complaint against the FBI. I'm sure you got out your notices as soon as possible. But... Uh, yes, sir? Unfortunately, my secretary was out when my notice came, and she's just handed it to me one hour too late. What do you mean? I bought those stolen bonds one hour ago. I see. Well, please don't disturb anything in your office, Mr. Adams. We'll be right over. William? William? Oh, I'm in here, Betts. Oh. Well, been home long, William? Not long. I didn't mean to get home after dark, but I went downtown to do some shopping late, and I met that Mrs. Wilson. Oh, I know what that means. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. Talk, talk, talk for hours, seems like. Yep. Just can't get away from her without... Well, for heaven's sake, William. Isn't that Mr. Carter? That's right. Well, why have you got him gagged and tied up in that chair? Well, can't you guess? Oh... You found out something. Yes, I'm afraid he was lying about what the bonds were worth. Oh, what a pity. Hmm. How much they worth? Face value, $50,000 plus interest. Hmm. Has he already sold them? Yep. Where's the money? Oh, we'll get it all right. Goodness. Imagine him trying to pull a stunt like that. Bet the trouble with crime, there's too many amateurs like Walter in it. His last mistake cost him two years. Yes, and he come mighty near getting us in the soup kettle besides. Mm, well, he's got himself in one this time. Uh, what are you going to do with him? I was just waiting till you got home and for it to get dark. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hand me the choker out of the drawer, would you? Oh, sure, dear. Now, look, Walter, I, I'd like to take your gag out, but the neighbors might hear you and get an idea something was wrong. Uh, uh, will this thing do, William? This, hmm? uh... Uh, yes, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Walter. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 I know you don't like being choked, but it'll be all over real soon. <laughs> Gone, Bet. Yes, poor fella. Well, it's getting late. I better fix some supper. And now, before the FBI file on the friendly killers resumes, as it will in just a moment. Here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has a special message for young couples who are setting up housekeeping in this first year of peace, 1946. A message, in fact, for all families who intend to build or buy a home or who now own a home. We have a plan that's made to order for you. It's called the Equitable Society's 
assured home ownership plan. And it offers you security along with these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. And besides, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Two, a special cash fund is built up ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage, pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years, saving six years' interest. Four, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Friendly Killer. There are a lot of amateurs in the field of crime, both beginners and habitual criminals, who are so engrossed in the achievement of their main objective, whether it be profit or emotional gratification, that they commit many glaring blunders which lead to their defeat. But the most seasoned and most calculating of professional criminals, such as the murderer called William Gates in tonight's case, differ from the amateurs in this respect only that they make fewer mistakes. But inevitably, they make at least one mistake, leave at least one clue, and it takes only that one to defeat them. It was only a couple of hours before William Gates and his wife Betty murdered Walter Carter that Special Agent Kidder of the Cleveland FBI office and Special Agent Miller received the telephone call from the bond broker, Adams. A few minutes later, in Adams' office... You say, Mr. Adams, that you bought the stolen bonds only about an hour before you received our warning notice. Uh, yes, as I told you, Mr. Kidder, my secretary was out when the notice was delivered. Hmm. Unfortunate timing. <laughs> well, that's certainly not your fault. Uh... Thank you, sir. The man who sold you the bonds. Uh, he gave the name of Jackson, but now that I know they were stolen bonds, I assume uh, that's not his real name. Can you describe him? Well, I'd say he was of medium height and weight, a well-tailored gray suit. Uh, or... Pardon me, sir. You say only medium height? Uh, that's right, Mr. Miller. And how old? Oh, I judge not more than, well, under 40 anyway. That's not the man we were looking for, Kidder. Uh, how's that? Sir? It was a man and his wife, Mr. Adams, who stole the bonds originally. And the man's description doesn't tally with the one you've given. How did you pay him for the bonds? I sent out for the cash. He said he needed it right away for another transaction. I see. Is everything in your office exactly as it was then? I haven't disturbed a thing since our phone conversation. Mm. Do you smoke cigarettes, Mr. Adams? Uh, no, sir. There's a half-smoked cigarette in your ashtray. Why, uh, uh, he smoked that himself. Are you positive? Yes. Uh, I had to pass him the tray. I... I remember. Yeah. And there ought to be a print on that cigarette. Right. We'll take the tray and all, if you don't mind, Mr. Adams. Go right ahead. And if you'll give us a more detailed description of the man, we may start getting somewhere pretty fast on this. Hello, Mrs. Carter. Oh, Hello, Mr. Gates. I'm sorry to bother you this late in the evening, but... Uh, Walter's not here. Uh, yes, I know. He, he was the one sent me. Oh? Come in. Uh, thank you. Where is Walter? 
He's uh, hiding out. Where? Well, now, he told me not to tell you because uh, you'd be sure to come to him, and he doesn't want to risk uh, getting you in trouble, too. What do you mean? Well, Walter thinks that somebody's on his trail since he sold those bonds. He didn't think that when he left here late this afternoon. No, I'm only doing what he told me, ma'am. What did he send you here for? He doesn't want the money here in case the police start searching the apartment. I don't believe it. You believe this, ma'am? Where did you get his keychain? Walter gave it to me so you could open the cash box. But I don't know the safe combination. He gave me that too, ma'am. Look, if Walter's trying to pull a run out on oh, me, I'll... No, no, no. You, you know he wouldn't do that to you, ma'am. He'd double-cross his own grandmother. I'd better get this money for him, like he said. Okay, but you tell him what I said. If he's trying to pull anything funny, I'll fix him good. <laughs> Kidder speaking. Hello, this is Miller. Oh, good morning, Miller. We haven't got the answer back on the cigarette prints yet. We don't need the answer now. Why not? The man who sold the bonds to Adams was Walter Carter. How do you know? The description checks exactly. And the police fished Carter's body out of the river 30 minutes ago. Yes? Is this Mr. Carter's apartment? That's right, but he's not here. Are you Mrs. Carter? Yes. We're special agents of the FBI. The FBI? We'd like to come in. But uh, Mr. Carter's not here, and this I... This is a search warrant, Mrs. Carter. Oh, come in. Go ahead, Miller. Thanks. When did you see your husband last? Why, he left yesterday afternoon late. Where was he going? He said he was going out of town. Is that all he told you? Yes, he never discusses his business with me. What is your husband's business, Mrs. Carter? Why, he's a, a promoter. What does he promote? Why, he... But look, tell me what this is all about. You don't know, Mrs. Carter? I, I don't know anything about anything. Your husband sold $50,000 worth of stolen bonds yesterday. What? Where did he get them? And what did he do with the money? I don't know. Mrs. Carter... This morning, your husband's body was found floating in the river. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. Apparently, that is news to you. Why, why wouldn't it be? Perhaps you will help us now. It, it's like I said. I don't know anything about anything. Very well, Mrs. Carter. But if you should uh, think of anything, let us know. <laughs> I'll answer it, Bet. Hello? Mr. Gates? Yes? This is Mrs. Carter. Oh. It's important that I get in touch with Walter, since you know where he is. Oh, but I, I don't. He, he left town after I gave him the money last night. Uh, uh, didn't say where he was going. Oh, but this is very important. Well, is there anything I can do? Well, it's about another job that just came up. Oh, I see. And, uh... Walter will miss making an awful lot of money if he doesn't get to handle it. Well, now, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you and I could handle it for Walter, ma'am. Oh, would you, Mr. Gates? Oh, sure thing. I'd do anything for you and Walter, ma'am. Wonderful. Then I'll be at your house at 8 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I reckon that's her now, Bet. It's about 8 o'clock. You better be careful, William. She might be up to something. No, I believe she was telling the truth, Bet. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. Well, come in, Mrs. Carter. Thanks. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Carter. Good evening. Well, looks like you might be going to do some traveling. I see you got your bag with you. That's right. I am going to do some traveling. Oh? I just stopped by to get a little expense money first. What? Well, now, I don't understand, ma'am. You, you said over the phone something about I a job. I wanted to make sure you'd be at home. What did I tell you, William? 
And now about that expense money. Yes, ma'am. I'll give it to you quick. Walter's body was found in the river this morning. We both know who did it. And we both know who's got that 50000 Yes, ma'am. I'll let you keep half of it to keep you quiet, and I'll take the other half to keep me quiet. Okay? Well, I guess most people would think that was a fair proposition, Mrs. Carter. William. Uh, uh, you... But when your half was spent, there'd be nothing to keep you from talking unless I put up some money. I made you a deal. Take it or leave it. Bet it appears there's only one thing for us to do. Yes. Now, look here. I don't know what you're up to. Get the choker out of the drawer. No, wait a minute. You... Take your hand off. Hurry, Bet. Here it is, William. Now, hold her arms, Bet. Stop where you are and don't move. What? Who are these men, William? We're special agents of the FBI. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess we must have slipped up somewhere, Bet. You did. By murdering Walter Carter. Yes, but And you... Mrs. Carter, we were sure you knew more than you told us. So we let you lead us here. Come on, all three of you. For the murder of Walter Carter, William Gates was turned over to local authorities and sentenced to the electric chair. His wife and accomplice received a long prison term, while Carter's widow was given a term in a federal penitentiary for conspiring with her husband in a theft of interstate transportation of property. They were all members of that vast and rapidly growing army of professional criminals in America. Your FBI and your local law enforcement agencies have mobilized to meet this army in a struggle that will decide the moral fate of this nation. But the balance of power is in your hands. It is your cooperation, your vigilance, your determination to stamp out crime. It is these that will decide the issue. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. Now, here are just two of the features that we believe entitle the Equitable Society to call the Assured Home Ownership Plan America's finest plan for home ownership. Just think, only 4% interest. And in case the owner dies, the widow owns the home free and clear, the mortgage is canceled. But there are other advantages to this Assured Home Ownership Plan, many of them. To be sure to get all of them plain and clear, call your Equitable Society representative. Get in touch with him by phoning the Equitable Life Assurance Society, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Surplus Swindle. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Surplus Swindle. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>